Welcome to Opposing Views, a hard, straightforward discussion of today's most pressing issues. We all want to prevent the spread of HIV in the Philippines and those who are infected to stay healthy. But the method on how to do so differs. For the Department of Health, one way is to implement a compulsory HIV test. We'll debate about the issue tonight. Our question is, will mandatory HIV testing decrease the number of HIV AIDS cases in the Philippines? Good evening, I'm Rod Pomoseno, and this is Opposing Views. The number of Filipinos living with HIV has reached an unprecedented level. The country recorded an 820% increase in a span of nine years, from 173 cases in 2001 to 1,591 cases in 2010. The Philippines is one of three countries in Asia and one of only seven countries in the world with a growing HIV epidemic. There is an estimate of 14 new HIV cases every day. HIV, or human immunodeficiency virus, is transmitted from having unprotected sexual intercourse, transfusion with infected blood, sharing of syringes and needles with someone who's HIV positive, and mother to their unborn babies or through breastfeeding. HIV is the virus that causes the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, or AIDS. In order to address the alarming HIV spread in the country, Health Assistant Secretary Eric Tayag recently pronounced that the Department of Health would want to shift from voluntary HIV testing to something compulsory. The department cleared that this is not for all Filipinos, but for specific groups only following a risk-based assessment. But Republic Act 8504, or the Philippine AIDS Prevention and Control Act of 1998, clearly states no compulsory HIV testing shall be allowed. Instead, the state shall encourage voluntary testing for individuals with a high risk for contracting HIV. The department said that they are talking to legislators for a possible amendment of the said law. Sexual rights advocates slammed the said idea by DOH, saying that this will cause panic, discrimination, and would force people to hide their condition. They also threatened that they will call for DOH Secretary Enrique Ona's resignation if they implement the mandatory HIV testing. Joining us tonight in our discussion is Dr. Lyndon Lee Sui, spokesperson of the Department of Health. Uh, good evening, uh, Dr. Lee. Yeah, uh, good evening, okay. Rod. Good evening. Yeah. Uh, um, can you uh, give us your, a quick um, summary uh, of, your, of your points, of your position regarding this question? Well, mandatory testing will only be provided to um, a certain group. Mm -hmm. which, which are the patients who would undergo special procedures mm -hmm. like operations. So mm -hmm. it would be limited only to these people. All right. Okay, now uh, on the other hand, the opposing side is uh, we have a former health secretary, Dr. Esperanza Cabral. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Attorney Rod. All right. Uh, ma'am, what is your position uh, regarding this? A quick uh, summary of your, uh, of your position. My position is uh, mandatory testing has to be carefully thought out because uh, we need to balance civil rights against public protection. Mm -hmm. And we need to make sure that uh, our ability to protect mm -hmm. the public by mandatory testing far exceeds, the benefits of that far exceeds mm -hmm. the harm that uh, violating civil rights may do. All right. Now, okay, let's, let's, uh, let's start off our discussion. Uh, Dr. Louis, I'm sorry, I called you Dr. C. I'm sorry, my, 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 my uh, apologies. Dr. Louis, um, let's clear the air first. Um, um, I'm not Ben Hart Louis. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> I want to yeah. clear, clear that, all right? So, Dr. Louis, all right. Um, not related, though. Lee Sui. <laughs> Lee Sui. It's Lee Sui. Lee Sui? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So, so Dr. Louis, all right. So, I'll, I'll call you Dr. Lee Sui. No, Lyndon will be fine. Lyndon, Dr. Dr. Lyndon, all right. Okay, uh, Dr. Lyndon, uh, let's uh, get the picture straight. No? Um, there, there are a lot of people reacting uh, to this, uh, as you may know. Um, what exactly is the plan of the DOH uh, with regards to mandatory HIV testing? Actually, um, 
since the other week, everything has gone out of proportion simply because mm -hmm. they were thinking the mandatory testing will be implemented to all, say, Filipinos, high-risk group like MSM or intravenous mm -hmm. drug user, which were not actually being considered by the Department of Health. Mm -hmm. Our mandatory, to our proposed mandatory testing, meaning it's not yet a law, mm -hmm. would be focused only to those people who would undergo a special procedure. Mm -hmm. Now, why are we focusing on them? Mm -hmm. um, they'll be undergoing a stressful like uh, situation, like going into an operation and we have to take care of them because their immune mm -hmm. system will go down, their resistance will go down as well, and we may need to provide some other like uh, approach for mm -hmm. them to be able to recover at once or mm -hmm. faster. Another, way, another reason is that we may need to protect us all the health workers, mm -hmm. the ones going to perform the operations. By knowing the status of the patients that uh, mm -hmm. would go into the procedure, mm -hmm. they may take some extra precautions or some procedures that may need to go through so that transmission will be prevented in a healthcare setting. Mm -hmm. All right, because uh, I guess the confusion, um, uh, Dr. Lyndon, now, was, is that you know, there were some statements, nga, and, and to quote you, at least to, uh, so there are several um, outlets, media outlets, who've quoted you as saying, "Gusto namin na mas, mag mas malaki malawak at na nasasakupan ng law uh, ng sagyan as mas malaki ang grupong matatarget natin para ma-avail ang gamot para sa HIV." So the the impression is that it's you're trying to expand uh, exactly. the coverage, no? exactly. um, not just those who are going to go through operations, but or no. surgery, but uh, also by, by expanding we yeah. mean. For those patients who will mm -hmm. go through the procedure, malalaman mm -hmm. natin kung positive sila, mm -hmm. and they can avail of the services in the offer ng Department of Health mm -hmm. for those patients who will be tested positive. Mm -hmm. So meaning, by expanding, we mean mm -hmm. through this group, mm -hmm. baka may makatch tayong positive, mm -hmm. at baka kailangan nilang mabigyan din ng mga services, mm -hmm. like the uh, antiretroviral medicine, the mm -hmm. counseling, for them to be able to lead a, a more productive life after the procedure. Mm -hmm. So yun, hindi naman expand that we're including some other groups here. Mm -hmm. Why do we need to invent the will kung meron mm -hmm. naman ginagawa na right. for them? All right, uh, thank you. Dr. Linden, Dr. Cabrala, in your, at, at least from, your, from where you're, you're coming from, uh, you feel that any kind of mandatory testing shouldn't be allowed? Uh, that's not true, though. Mm. Um, I think that there are some instances when mandatory testing may be allowed. But uh, before we do any mandatory testing, there are certain requirements that we have to fulfill. For example, the first is that what we are testing is something serious. Because mm. obviously, if it's a mm. mild thing, you don't need to do any screening for it. Mm. It's just going to happen and people are going to recover and that's going to be it. But if it's something serious, mm. then we might uh, be able to consider that. Second is it has to be prevalent. Mm -hmm. if, the in, if the case or if the disease or the condition is um, not prevalent like HIV AIDS, which has a prevalence, which has a, a prevalence rate estimated at present to be 0.001 percent mm. then you're going to have to test a million people in order to identify 10 people with hiv and you're going to have to spend mm. so a from, billion pesos from a fiscal in standpoint order at least to diagnose one mm. and that's just not cost effective mm -hmm. second is you must be able to handle the people whom you test positive, mm -hmm. if you ever test them. Because mm -hmm. what's the use of testing mm -hmm. if you're not going to be able to give them the goods and services that they require? Mm -hmm. And I don't think that at present we fulfill that particular mm -hmm. uh, requirement. And of course, the other th important thing there, as I mentioned before, is that uh, the predictable benefits must far outweigh the potential risks, mm -hmm. including the violation of human or civil rights. Which is, as, which is as key. Civil, as yes, which is key. Very important, yeah. Yes, in order to provide public protection. Now, you, do you feel, ma'am, uh, Dr. Cabral, uh, is that, uh, do you feel that the DOH recommendation um, is an assurance that the rise of HIV cases will be halted? Do you think that their recommendation of at least uh, as Dr. Linda was saying, the mandatory testing on, on these people who are about to get operated on. Do you think that that will lessen the number of HIV cases? No, I don't think so. Because um, the people who are going to go into operation are going to be like the general population, 
where the prevalence of HIV AIDS is going to be very small. Mm. And so if it is going to be something like that, there is no way that you're going to prevent a rise in mm. the prevalence or incidence of HIV. Now, when you were health secretary, did you feel the need to do so, to have some kind of mandatory testing for HIV? No, I no? felt the need to implement the law as it is because there are so many provisions of the um, mm -hmm. current Republic Act 8504 yeah. on HIV AIDS that has not been imp have not been implemented and I think that if we do that without going into mandatory testing we are going to be able to reduce the prevalence mm -hmm. of and incidence of HIV in the country. Mm -hmm. well, Dr. Lyndon, the position of uh, well, former a uh, former health secretary, Dr. Cabral. Your feeling is that, uh, one, of course, it, uh, there's a, an impact here on the, the right to self, the, uh, right to privacy. No? Uh, that's, the, that's the first thing. And also, uh, it is going to be very costly to be implementing this, considering that HIV, at least based on uh, uh, former Secretary Cabral, is not that prevalent yet. Do you personally feel that having this kind of mandatory compulsory or compulsory testing will, you think it will address the, the, the rise in HIV cases? Um, we did not claim that we're going to stop the rise or we'll bring mm. down the number of um, mm. HIV cases mm -hmm. but by doing the mandatory testing. Mm. What we intend to do here is to protect as well mm -hmm. other possible um, potential uh, patients or potential people that might get infected mm -hmm. by performing some procedures to these patients. Mm -hmm. That's our main purpose here. Mm -hmm. Another thing is, as we, I said a while ago, um, Secretary Cabral was saying, like, we may not have the provisions to provide our patients mm. or somebody who would be tested positive. Mm. Uh, before we got into this, uh, we actually made sure that uh, we do have enough services that we can offer. Mm. Enough resources. Who ever be mm. uh, tested positive, like mm -hmm. the medicines that will be given to them. And all we want to do is after the procedure, after the testing, whoever will be tested positive, they can avail. Mm -hmm. whatever services that we can actually give them. All right. Now, uh, in your mind, and I'm, I, I can't have a feeling what your answer will be, but is the healthcare system uh, ready? Are healthcare system ready to address this epidemic? We will not have, uh, we're, we're focusing on the mandatory testing. Mm -hmm. yes, I mean, if yes. we're ready with that. Yes. We will not be endorsing this one unless uh, we're really ready to, to address this issue. But then let me qualify this when we say mm -hmm. mandatory testing for those mm -hmm. who are going to undergo the procedure. Yes. We may need to, there's, there's a venue, of course, for this, to qualify who among those to be tested among those who go into operations. Okay. Can I, you, I don't think it will be everyone as well. Yeah. Can we you explain mean, what, what, yeah, what the like qualification the, is? Probably or? like uh, the age group may be considered as well. Um, those like people who will undergo, say, major operations, like what uh, Secretary Cabral said a while ago, minor operations or probably some minor procedures may need not go through this because mm. the risk of acquiring the infection may be uh, very low. Those just you need to go through mm. the mandatory testing. So the room is still open. Mm -hmm. We may need to come out with guidelines on who will be tested, mm -hmm. who needs to go through the procedure, and yeah. whoever will be tested will go through the same process as well. Like anybody who would come in for testing, there will be counseling. Mm -hmm. Uh, we will practice utmost confidentiality as well with this one. So, and the kaiba lang is that these will be patients who will undergo procedures mm -hmm. like operations. Yeah, I think the concern also, uh, Dr. Lyndon, is uh, stems from the fact that you know whenever you put the word mandatory, compulsory, it means uh, under penalty of law, right? <laughs> meaning uh, you have to do this, otherwise you you will suffer something. So what what are what are those those consequences in your mind? What what would be those consequences if they say no? I, Actually, the, the 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 noise now is because of the word mandatory. Yes, yes. Would have been different if you use the word routine, uh -huh. or recommendatory. No, recommendatory <laughs> would be different with routine. Uh, uh, routine uh, okay. If we actually made use of, mm -hmm. okay, uh, HIV testing will be part of the routine exams mm -hmm. before a patient goes through, uh, say, a procedure. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, it so would, it's a terminology. It uh, Ma'am, do you think that by changing it to routine, do you think that that will, that will address your concerns about this, uh, this plan? If you change it to routine, then it will become voluntary. It will not become mandatory, mandatory. anymore. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you, you can opt out. Yes. Let's put it that way. You can say, no, I don't want yes. to have the test done. Yes. So it is not going to be mandatory anymore. Yes, but, so, but, but the whole concept though, the whole mm. concept of it, 
that you have to. Yes. You have to do it. That uh -huh. you're 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 against that, right? That uh, you have to. On a general basis, yes. yes. There has to be really good reason to make a test mandatory, as mm -hmm. I said. Mm, all right, okay. All right, uh, we need to take a short break. Uh, meanwhile, you can react online via Facebook at facebook.com slash solar opposing views or tweet your comments at opposing underscore views. Use the hashtag OV mandatory HIV test. Stay tuned, you're watching Opposing Views. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're still watching Opposing Views on the Solar News Channel. We have with us Dr. Lyndon Lee Suey, spokesperson of the Department of Health and former Health Secretary, Dr. Esperanza Cabral. And our debate question for tonight, will mandatory HIV testing decrease the number of HIV AIDS cases in the Philippines? All right. Um, uh, Dr. Lyndon, uh, what is the basis? Now? What is the basis of choosing patients undergoing the procedure as the, the first high-risk high group uh, for mandatory testing? Well, we have not really come out with, uh, say, an activity or probably advocacy in a healthcare setting, meaning transmission can also happen in this area. Mm -hmm. So one way is really making sure that the infection is not transmitted from patient to the physician as well, mm -hmm. or to the healthcare worker. So mm -hmm. in one way as well, to first be able to get Mm. or be able to detect patients who will be tested positive mm. is uh, through those patients who would undergo procedure. Mm -hmm. So we were limiting it to them first. All right, okay. Uh, Ma'am, uh, Dr. Cabral, are, are you for that? Uh, let's say those, those, those particular patients that... Uh, no, I, I think that those patients, and we're not talking of emergency yeah. cases, Yeah, they're not right? emergency. Yeah. Okay. These are people who are going to public health facilities, okay. right? Mm -hmm. I think that in the initial evaluation for surgery, mm -hmm. then counseling on HIV testing should be given. And if the person has a high, if there is a high index of suspicion that this person might be um, having HIV or AIDS, then this person should be strongly encouraged to uh, undergo the test. Otherwise, if the person does not want to do that, mm -hmm. then we just have to be careful. If we feel that uh, this person probably has HIV, we have to exercise even more care when we are doing surgery to make sure mm -hmm. that there is no contamination of blood or other body fluids from the patient to the healthcare workers. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, ma'am, um in your mind, is mandatory HIV testing? Um, you mentioned earlier uh, it it uh, it violates uh, the right to privacy uh, and the freedom of freedom of choice. Um, do you th do you think that that um, is enough uh, justification, uh, considering the risks involved in 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 uh, with a disease such as AIDS, for example? Uh, for the general population, no, it's not. Okay, mm -hmm. because uh, really the prevalence is so low mm -hmm. and it's going to violate the rights of so many people before you can come up with somebody positive for Correct. HIV. So you're, you're saying it, it definitely will yes. violate, right? Right. Uh, yeah, it, it does. It violates. But of course, mm -hmm. our civil rights have limitations too. Yeah. And if, impinge, if it impinges on public protection, then we are going to have to think of it in a secondary manner to mm. the public protection. Right. Okay, Do Dr. Lyndon, the position of uh, former Secretary Cabral, no? it's, it's not yet in that stage. No? I mean, this disease, I mean, she pointed out a percentage, you know, 0 0.001%. 0 1%. 1 uh, so we're, we're not, not yet far from an epidemic, um, I guess, an epidemic proportion. No? Uh, so in, 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 in that regard, do you think that it's worth even suggesting this mandatory testing, considering the, the, the number of civil rights or human rights on, to privacy, you're gonna to have to violate, you know, just the, just the thought of it, of, of, of making it compulsory for, for these people. R routine, as you would say, but, you know, cause it, 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 I guess it's, it's okay to have a routine checkup on your, on your ears and your eyes, and, but this one has, let's face it, it has a lot of stigma involved, right? 
Um, stigma would only come in if you're going to consider stigma. Mm. Okay. But then, like, yeah, uh, the currently the, the, the rate is at 0.0001. Mm. Uh, but then we might just be at the tip of this iceberg. Mm. Uh, you, you just mentioned about stigma. Mm. We wanted to address that as well. That mm -hmm. it's not really a problem for you to come out and be tested. Simply because there's something that we can do for you. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that should be a reason for us to stop on what we would want to do. Mm -hmm. For us to be able to provide uh, and lead uh, a patient who will be tested positive for mm -hmm. him to, or her to have a more productive and quality life. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, do, Doctor, do you think, though, this, uh, will it cause discrimination and stigma uh, if, uh, if we, we have this kind of requirement? Um, knowing that somebody has HIV or AIDS, mm. definitely there is stigma attached to that particular yeah. condition. Because I'm not, I'm not just talking about the Philippines. Yeah. No? I mean, yeah. you, we also, I don't know if you also, Donald Sterling, mm -hmm. you know, with, yeah. with his very, almost, I have to say, ignorant uh, comments regarding HIV and AIDS. In fact, confusing mm -hmm. HIV and AIDS, right? So, uh, will you agree with me, uh, Doctora, that uh, it will cause some kind of discrimination if you, we re require this? The requirement itself will not cause discrimination. Mm -hmm. It is knowing that somebody has HIV or AIDS that mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, that has that will give you discrimination. Well, but that's a point. If you do the testing, you will find out if the person has HIV or AIDS. So. Not really, because uh, confidentiality. there is confidentiality of these uh, mm -hmm. results. Mm -hmm. It is not going to be made public right. to the mm -hmm. entire 100 million Filipinos. It is something that is between the physician the and patient. the patient. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you think, though, isn't it the government, uh, the government's objective to, to change the stigma against HIV? Uh, testing. Do you think it, it is? Do you think it's the government's uh, role or responsibility to change uh, the stigma that's attached to a HIV? Uh, well, I think yes, the government has some responsibility to see to it that these people are not discriminated against. Mm -hmm. But that is a long, hard climb. Mm -hmm. It cannot be a dictum. Mm -hmm. Today I say you should not discriminate people with HIV AIDS and tomorrow that mm -hmm. happens. It just doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. It has to be uh, by making people aware mm -hmm. that uh, even if you kiss a person with HIV AIDS, you are not going to contract HIV mm -hmm. or AIDS. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this has to be repeated. It's like advertising for a soft drink. Mm -hmm. Every day you have to do it because if you don't, then they forget about it. Mm -hmm. It's not just HIV AIDS, which is um, a matter for discrimination. Even tuberculosis is mm -hmm. a matter for discrimination. Mm -hmm. When people find out that you have tuberculosis, they mm -hmm. tend to shy away from you. They don't want to talk to you because yeah. you might yeah. cough in their faces yeah. Yeah, and you might contract tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. In fact, that is the reason why for employment, a chest x-ray or some other procedure that is going to diagnose tuberculosis is required, mandatory. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, people accept that. Mm -hmm. And we have to get to the stage where people accept testing for HIV or AIDS. Mm -hmm. Do you think we'll reach a point, uh, Dr. Lyndon, uh, because we were talking about, yeah, we, let's, let's, let's talk about that point, no? about testing for employment, for example. Do you think we'll ever reach that point that uh, maybe even for employment, let's say even government, uh, you would require mandatory testing of, of HIV? Uh, for I don't HIV? think so. No. Mm -hmm. the, the law says that we cannot do mandatory testing for, for, employment. Uh, for employment, even oh. for schools, mm -hmm. uh, say um, for housing as well, or even for um, other services that, ca mm -hmm. that are being offered by the government. So that one will never, it, it you don't never think it will never happen. happen? It was never even considered. All right, okay, okay. just uh, again, that's to... That's, I guess uh, we're communicating that to our televiewers now. So uh, this will never happen, this kind of yes. mandatory testing. All right. So that's, I'm glad you cleared that up. All right. We need to take a short break. More on the issue of compulsory HIV testing when we come back. Please stay with us.
Salvador po para malaman natin kung uh, malinis tayo o hindi. Pabor ako kasi um, ma-prevent yung, yung pagdami pa nang merong may sakit na HIV. Pabor ako doon sa panukala na yun. Para malaman natin kung sino talaga yung may mga sakit sa kababayan natin, di ba? At least, para magamot sila, di ba? Okay, para sa akin, okay lang naman. Since, uh, one way rin yun para malaman kung meron ka talagang AIDS. Para po sa akin, actually, I'm not in favor for that one. It's because that, um, it's your choice and it's your optional for that one. Uh, kasi, uh, private yan, it's really important for us na, siyempre, it's really ashamed na malaman na ibang tao. Hindi po ako pabor na mandatory yun. Kasi hindi naman, mas maraming ano na yun, maapektuhan na tao doon kasi hindi naman, makikita mo nun sa isang tao kung mag-HIV o wala, di ba? E ba't mo yung mandatory pa yun? Kung malalaman ng tao na ang isang empleyado ay eh, meron nun, hindi naman sa iiwas, kundi para lang ma-avoid na hindi na makahawa pa. Kailangan siguro uh, acceptance na may sakit ka. So, so you need cure. Yeah, yun. So it needs attention. Welcome back. You're still watching Opposing Views on the Solar News Channel. I'm Rod Depomseno. Still with us, Dr. Lyndon Lee Sui, spokesperson of the Department of Health and former Health Secretary, Dr. Esperanza Cabral. And our question for tonight, will mandatory HIV testing decrease the number of HIV AIDS cases in the Philippines? Now, uh, Dr. Lyndon, um, the general feeling is, is that um, uh, there's you know, the, the stigma that we were talking about, you know, that HIV, when you say the word HIV and AIDS, it's usually related to uh, a, a disease that you contract uh, from sex. No? Um, and that seems to be where the, the stigma is coming from. It, there's, there's, uh, that's something for a lot of people, it's, it's, it's very private. You know? and, and that's the reason why those who are speaking out are people who feel that they're being singled out. You know, those who have HIV or those who may be having a lifestyle uh, that could lead to, to that. Now, uh, you mentioned earlier that the, the, the government is, uh, has the resources to conduct the mandatory um, or compulsory testing that you were proposing uh, regarding if for, for pre-operation purposes. Um, and we were discussing this uh, off-air no? um, with Dr. Cabral. Do you think that perhaps maybe the, the budget that's a lot for this is, uh, can be better uh, used for, for other, well, should I say, other diseases no? that, are, that are not in, you know, that are more, should I say, uh, prevalent in number. Because uh, as we mentioned earlier, 0.001% is not an epidemic. There are other diseases that require, probably require uh, more attention. So do you think that the, the government is using its resources wisely by focusing on this? Uh, we have not really explored mm -hmm. on how the, uh, say, payment scheme would be mm -hmm for the testing of HIV AIDS, mm -hmm. but then that will come in next once mm -hmm. the uh, mandatory testing is really pushed uh, and be allowed to mm -hmm. be used. So it's a, something that we need to explore as well mm -hmm. regarding on, say, whether it be provided for free mm -hmm. or do we need to charge or do we need to charge it, say, through yeah. some key payment scheme or healthcare, mm -hmm. um, like, for example, PhilHealth, mm -hmm. that we need to explore. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. Cabral, you were, we were talking earlier, uh, you mentioned that, uh, you did say that there, there are probably more diseases, apart from HIV, that would probably uh, benefit from the budget of the government that's being used for mandatory testing. Well, uh, you, yes. you mentioned that. Uh, can you elaborate on that? Yes. And do you think that well, that's the case? We should yes. be using the fund along for something uh -huh. um, more important. As you First, let me say that uh, I agree that HIV um, and AIDS are HIV AIDS is a very serious problem mm -hmm. and that we should not be ignoring it just mm -hmm. because the prevalence rate is low mm -hmm. right now. We want to keep it as low as possible. Mm -hmm. We don't want a 10% prevalence of HIV. We want it to remain at 0 0.001. But as we said, there are many other conditions mm -hmm. that the Department of uh, Health can probably spend its money more wisely on mm. rather than on mandatory testing. Mm. And even when it comes to just HIV, there are many alternatives to mandatory testing that will help bring down or keep the rate 
of HIV down. Mm -hmm. And those are the things that we should focus on. Mm -hmm. For example, as uh, we were talking about earlier, the law, the law right now, Republic Act 8504, requires contact tracing, mm -hmm. which is not being done. Mm -hmm. So I think that what should happen is the government should make a good effort mm -hmm. to enforce and implement what is already in the law mm -hmm. instead of making another law. Mm -hmm. I, I'm glad you pointed that out, uh, Dr. Cabral, uh, because um, I actually, that was my next question. Uh, there, the DOH has been lobbying uh, some legislators uh, for a possible amendment of the AIDS law. Now, uh, I mean, do you, in your mind, uh, Dr. Lyndon, do you think we should amend the, the AIDS law? And if ever, uh, what amendments do you think we should have to okay. further address this? Uh, the law was made in 1989. Mm -hmm. At that time, we do not have any, well, not much information yet as far as HIV AIDS is concerned. The law is actually based on, say, countries mm -hmm. where uh, they have a better understanding of what HIV AIDS at that time. But then it's been like 30 years mm -hmm. since uh, the law was made. Mm -hmm. And I guess there are some part of the law that may need to be reviewed. Mm -hmm and lobby it for, say, amends, amendment for that, so that we'll be able to implement some of the procedures there. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, what the Secretary said a while ago, contact, contact tracing. Mm -hmm. We agree uh, that it's part of the, eight, uh, the, the AIDS law, mm -hmm. but then it's part of the one that we're lobbying as well, that we need to enhance on the contact tracing. Mm -hmm. And it's not only focused on the contact tracing, what we are lobbying here. Mm -hmm. We would also want to include that Provisions for, say, ARV should be in place. Mm -hmm. um, strengthen as well the advocacy so that they will know as to where to avail of these services. Mm -hmm. And part one, one small part will be on mandatory testing for this um, sector, for those people who would undergo operations. So it's not really limited only to mandatory testing, mm -hmm. but rather would include mm -hmm. other uh, things that we may need to strengthen, like contact tracing. Okay. Now, um are there case studies abroad um, re regarding uh, or similar to what you are proposing? Because again, we were talking earlier, um, and I know in the foreign governments refuse to fund anything uh, that will require mandatory testing. So, but, but maybe uh, you can enlighten us with this, Dr. Lyndon. Um, are there case studies abroad, maybe in other countries, where they implemented this uh, kind of mandatory testing and resulted to there were tangible results in terms of lessening uh, or lessening the, the cases of HIV. Yeah, let me make this clear, uh, Attorney Rod. We do not really claim that doing the mandatory testing will bring down the number of HIV mm -hmm. AIDS cases. Uh, we have other reasons why we would want to do this. Like, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. um, taking care of those pa patients yeah. who would undergo the procedure. Oh, procedure, yeah. Now, uh, we do not know of any country as of now mm -hmm. that has implemented say, mandatory testing for patients who would undergo any procedure. Mm. But then that, that's a, that would, should that stop us from doing things that we think would be of benefit eventually for, for everyone. Mm -hmm. so, so, what, what is the, so I guess what's the basis though? I mean, what, I mean apart from, so you, because the, the ultimate basis or reason for it is that you want to be able to provide the right medicine. For the, the healthcare right facilities for, oh. set up naman. Yeah. Okay. All right. So if, if, if we were limited to that, Dr. Cabral, if we were limited to ju just that for those people who are going to go through surgery, mm -hmm. not, because it, as earlier mentioned by uh, Dr. Lyndon, even those who are entering the, the public health facilities lang for checkup and all that may, may requirement. But let's say we focus purely on that, on, on those people who are about to have surgery. Or, um, do you think that making it mandatory is reasonable. And no, happen. I don't think so. Yeah, I would rather make um, other tests like hepatitis B or hepatitis C mm -hmm. um, required instead of HIV AIDS because I know that the prevalence of hepatitis B and hepatitis C far exceed the prevalence of HIV AIDS. So it's mm -hmm. going to be more cost effective. And mm -hmm. anyway, you still need to be aseptic in your techniques. You still need to practice every kind of precaution so that you, if you are the healthcare provider, are not um, contaminated and you as the healthcare provider 
will not contaminate your patient because mm. this is a two-way two street. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, so, mm. in fact, you could argue that if you are going to test the patient, you should be testing the healthcare provider too. Mm, okay. Now, Dr. Lyndon, apart from HIV or, or AIDS, or are there other diseases where you require or you are proposing such kind of uh, compulsory or mandatory testing? Well, some of them might come in next, like mm. what uh, the Secretary yeah, so proposed this, this a while ago. This is just the first. Yes. I guess that's where the, I guess, I guess the, the questions are, are, are coming up you know, right. because it happens to be the first. Right. And because it's, it's and HIV and AIDS, it's a very sensitive topic. Yes. It involves people's, uh, I guess, sexual now, habits. Uh, would, there, would it have been different if we started with hepatitis that eventually include HIV AIDS? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. We, we, don't, we, we can't tell because <laughs> the first one that came out exactly. was HIV and AIDS. And, and, and uh, as you know, there, were, there was a lot of reaction to it. So but then definitely things are being considered here, mm. especially those diseases that are being mm -hmm. transmitted through, through, through say, through blood body fluids. And mm -hmm. body yeah, I, fluids. I think, uh, as we mentioned earlier, I think they feel that this group, they, this group they're being singled out. So no, they, you know, definitely not, because uh, we're not limiting ourselves with HIV AIDS. All right. <laughs> all right. All, all right. We, we need to take a, a, a short break. Uh, opposing views will be right back. Please don't go away. We'll have our poll when we come back. Welcome back. This is Opposing Views. I'm Rod Bomseno. Our guest, Dr. Lyndon Lee Sui, spokesperson of the Department of Health and former health secretary, Dr. Esperanza Cabral. And we asked for tonight, will mandatory HIV testing decrease the number of HIV AIDS cases in the Philippines? Now, uh, ma'am, uh, we have a couple of minutes left, so I'm going to ask this. Uh, if, if it's not this mandatory testing, what is your alternative? What, what, is, what do you propose? Uh, um, I guess, uh, to rephrase that question, what, uh, what, what, what is your alternative in case that uh, you're blocked by the DOH in implementing this, this, uh, this policy? You know? what, what, what other alternatives do you have apart from mandatory testing? In case the DOH is blocked from yes. doing this mandatory testing, yes. Yes. they can do many other things. They can strengthen the counseling and voluntary testing program that is currently mm. in effect. They can strengthen their contact tracing, which is also within the law. They can strengthen their information campaign. They can strengthen um, their, um, or encourage people to do what should be done, which is A, abstinence, um, B is, uh, I don't know, B, Linda. Be loyal. Be loyal. Uh, be faithful. Yeah. Be faithful, be faithful yeah. okay. and see, condoms. use your condoms. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yes. just further the education, right. strengthen the education yes. there. Uh, uh, Dr. Lyndon, in your case, if, if let's say the clamor is too loud no? and the noise is too loud, and people are really gonna go after you, there's some groups who have said that they will they'll actually go for the resignation of uh, the secretary if this uh, goes on. Uh, what are the alternatives? Well, definitely, Attorney Rod. Um, you're, you're listening. It's, it's not yet a law now, yeah, okay? Yeah. And before it becomes a law, there will be a public uh, discussion on this mm -hmm. one. They will be invited. There will be venue for this. Mm -hmm. So that we'll be able to discuss with them on how to uh, better approach this one. Mm -hmm. But then definitely we're pushing on the mandatory testing. Okay. But do you think, though, that uh, to some extent, uh, Dr. Linden, do you think that uh, you were, uh, the DOH was maybe misconstrued or there was some kind of miscommunication there to, to the e public? Exactly. The, the, the clamor was really thinking that the mandatory testing would be for everyone, Yeah. for the high-risk group, like, for yeah. example, the MSM, the intravenous drug user, mm -hmm. where, in fact, they were not even considered when we were thinking about mandatory mm -hmm. testing. There's mm -hmm. no such thing as... If, uh, the, the, another problem uh, that they're raising, uh, rise, uh, raising up would be after mm -hmm. these uh, patients would undergo surgery, the next group will be those MSM and those, say, mm -hmm. intravenous drug users. Mm -hmm. That won't happen because we already have some approaches with them already, like, for example, for MSM, the, the uh, uh, practice safe sex, mm -hmm. for intravenous drug users, for the syringe. 
So we already have approaches for them. Why reinvent the wheel? Mm -hmm. Meaning, we're focusing only on, on this group. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and of, of, of course, can you maybe relate, just for our televiewers, no? uh, are, what are the other programs of, of the Department of Health, apart from this mandatory testing? I mean, do, can they go to a site, for example, where, where they, you know, if they need to get more educated on, on, on HIV and AIDS? Yes. We have expanded our surveillance as well. Mm. Uh, we made sure that uh, our treatment hub will have enough uh, medicine available mm -hmm. for patients who would want to avail of our ARV. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, we're expanding as well on our, we want to strengthen our advocacy as well mm -hmm. for them to know on, really, we need to review again with them on how to avoid HIV AIDS, things that they need to do. Mm -hmm. And if they think they're infected, how would they go through the process? But then as what Secretary said a while ago, no one would know. If we're tested positive, yeah. that we can assure. Okay, so we that's, practice that's, utmost confidentiality. Yeah, here. that's where I think that's where it all stems. The concern, as we saw from the interviews earlier, uh, people not, were saying if, if people find out that I have, I have positive. I'm HIV positive, and that that's what bothers them. The, the, yeah. yeah, the stigma. You know what, attorney? Even your parents wouldn't know unless your patient gets to tell you yes. You can tell my parents about this. Mm -hmm. So everything will have to come from the pa patient himself. All right. But then not from the health workers. Okay. We, re we reached the tail end of our show. So uh, we'll ask our guests. Uh, I'll start with you, Dr. Lyndon. Uh, can you give us your, your parting words, your final words to our televiewers out there? So nothing is final answer. with mandatory testing. We're pushing it simply because we do have a cause for, for this one. Mm -hmm. And what we would want to achieve here is not really bringing down the number of HIV AIDS cases, but rather providing them with the quality mm -hmm. and uh, a better life after being tested positive. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lyndon C. Louis. Thank you so much. And uh, Dr. Esperanza Cabral, uh, your, your, your final words to our televiewers? Well, uh, I, I would encourage the Department of Health to see to the enforceability and the implementation of the current Republic Act that deals with HIV AIDS. Because mm -hmm. there are many things there that are good, that will work towards reducing the prevalence and incidence of HIV AIDS if only we can implement them on a universal basis, on an effective and efficient basis. Right, okay. The title of the show might be Opposing Views, and we might have opposing views on how to handle things. However, I think we're all on the same page when we say we want to get rid, or at least decrease, yeah. always decrease, the cases, the number of cases of HIV and AIDS. So thanks to our guests, Dr. Uh, Lyndon Lisoy and Dr. Esperanza Cabral. Thank you very much. Now let's feel the pulse of our viewers through our online poll. Our question, will mandatory HIV AIDS testing decrease the number of HIV AIDS cases in the Philippines? Those who answered yes, 40%, and those who answered no, 60%. And that's our opposing views for tonight. Tune in again next week for another bold and engaging discussion on today's most pressing issues. I'm Rod Nepomuceno. Good night and God bless. And this is the kind of show, at least, na ka clarify. Like, ingay lang ng iba ang ginamit ng dahilan. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, they were saying, like, oh, we should stop it because MSM are next. Mm -hmm. It's a Venus drug users are next. Mm -hmm. Hindi naman namin plano ng gawin niyo. <laughs> oh, yun nga yung nagiging na impression. Yung doon sila nagbukas mm -hmm. sa issue na yun. Mm -hmm. oh. thank, you, thank, thank you for taking the time. I know it's Friday night, so. Thank you. Uh, Maraming po salamat. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.